After you spend a few hundred hours playing any game, you'll surely discover a few things that aren't so obvious. After more than 350 hours playing Grounded, I've found more than a few, and in this video I'll be sharing 10 things you probably didn't know. If you're not subscribed to the channel, be sure to do so now so you never miss any future Grounded videos. Let's get started. First thing we're going to talk about today that you probably didn't know about Grounded is that you can actually leave food on the roasting spit forever and it will never spoil or burn. Now, I'm going to be honest, this is probably not intended, and I wouldn't be surprised if it's not patched in the future. So if you're watching this way after it went live, specifically after like a big update, maybe one of the big updates that comes in 2022, there's a chance this might be patched out and not work anymore. But right now you can take advantage of it. So what you do is you're going to put the meat on here. What we're going to do is we're going to let this cook. We're going to grab one of them off that's cooked, and then I'm going to go to sleep, and I'm going to come back and show you how much difference there is in how much the one that I've taken off has actually lost its freshness while the one that's on here is gonna have 100% of its freshness. We're gonna nab that one. You're gonna notice when you have food, so this weevil meat is right here. It's gonna have this little green circle. This is slowly gonna start degrading counterclockwise until it gets to zero, and then it will turn into spoiled meat. We're gonna go to sleep real quick, and this will show you degradation of the food. All right, so this one, as you can see, we lost about a, going to sleep cost us about a quarter of the freshness on the food. Now we're going to go grab the other one off of there. So here's the one still on here. I'm going to grab that one off. And you're going to notice it is still at 100% freshness. I've used, I've been doing this on my new survival world. I basically just leave stuff there for days, weeks at a time in game and come back. It's my new best way of like getting food because right now I'm basically relying off of mostly roasted roasts because the meals, I don't really feel the meals are that super necessary unless you're trying to do something like really specific, like fighting a, the brood mother or maybe doing some other things, but just generally playing, I'm just kind of mostly living off of the roasts. So what I do is I normally set up two or three roasts at a building that I have set up like some of my bases, and then I just leave the food on there. So I'll have like eight or nine pieces of roasted meat sitting there. So anytime I come back, I can always grab one and eat it, replace it with one I have that I've just farmed and put it back there. Basically just always have food. So definitely take advantage of that before they take it out of the game, because I'm sure it's going to get taken out of the game at some point in the future. Second tip is also going to be food and drink related, and that's regarding smoothies. So if you're not familiar with smoothies, you can craft up to 10 different smoothies right now. And each smoothie will give you a bonus status and it will also heal you. So as you can see, Green Machine gives you hyper stamina and Boost Juice is going to give you max stamina. Each one of them gives you something different. And what you may or may not know is you can actually stack these bonuses on top of one another. So we're going to craft ourselves a Green Machine and then we're going to craft ourselves a Boost Juice. Now, when we're going to look, you're going to see where the bonuses are. It's under statuses. So temporary effects here. Right now we have well fed because we ate a roast a minute ago. And then we have comfy hunger and comfy thirst because we slept inside of a bed. What we're gonna do is we're gonna drink these two smoothies real quick. And you're gonna see that it actually shows both of the bonuses underneath of the temporary status effects. So we drank the boost juice and the green machine. Down here you see we have hyper stamina and max stamina and then how long it's gonna take before they cool down. And the thing that you can do is obviously, this is super useful. I used it when I fought the Broodmother in my new solo playthrough. I actually ended up stacking five different things. I used Green Machine, Fuzz on the Rocks, Boost Juice, Liquid Rage, and Human Food. So I got quicker stamina regeneration, more max health, more max stamina, more attack damage, and a higher damage resist, so I took less damage. And then I was also using them for healing. Now, one thing to note is, while they do stack individually, you can't drink like five human foods and give yourself five damage resist. It's only gonna give you one. You will heal every time you drink one, but you only get one of each of these bonuses. They're all individual, so you could technically drink all 10 and have 10 bonuses. Wouldn't make sense because some of them are for specific things, but do be mindful of that. Smoothies are definitely more important now, especially if you're playing on medium or WOMO because you're going to definitely use them for healing and for some of the battles. Third thing you might not have known is you can actually swing the slower swinging weapons much faster. This also applies to the faster swinging weapons. It applies to any weapon you can actually block with, so any of the melee weapons. And what you do is you're basically going to attack and then block and attack and block. And it's going to show you, we're going to see how much faster it, it swings. So the hammer has the slowest attack speed in the game of 0.5. Weapons either have 0.5, I believe the spear has, the spear has 7 and the axe probably has 3.5. So you have 0.5, 3.5, and 7. Those are three different attack speeds currently in the game. And obviously the higher it is, the faster it swings. So we're going to show you how slow the hammer, the, the yeah, pebblet hammer swings on its own. So that's one swing. You gotta wait for it to recover and hit two. What you can actually do is you can swing, block, and then swing, block, and then swing, and block. This is super useful, specifically with the hammer, if you're farming quartzite, if you're using it as a weapon, 
it's super useful because you can get, especially with the insect hammer, since it has such a high stun capability, you can end up getting a lot of the smaller insects stun locked, which is super useful. So definitely use that for when you're farming quartzite and when you're using it in battle. You can also use it with an axe for chopping down weeds and grass. So we're going to go over here and chop down some grass and just show you it works on that as well. Now the axe does swing pretty quick, so it's probably not going to be as useful for the axe, but you can just go... There you go. It's chopping it down. Now, the, another tip with farming resources is you can actually get crits on your farming. So if you have coup de grass unlocked, there's two phases. Phase one is 10%. Phase two is 25%. You can get up to 25% with this. If you eat the spider slider, and or spider slider gives you crit chance, or the larvanya gives you crit chance, I think, I, I'm not sure 100% on this. I think they probably add about like 10%. So I think you could probably get about 35%. I have not actually checked. I do believe the food stack, but I don't believe you can have two of the same food stacking. So I think the highest you could probably get is about a 35% crit chance, which would be one out of every three. And we're going to see if we can actually get this with the axe. And actually, you saw right there, it's when you see that little spark. So it's going to do double damage when you get that little spark. So let's see if we got it right there on the first hit. It works when you're farming resources. So when you're farming grass, weed stems, pebblets, quartzite, sap, anything that you're farming resources with either the axe or the hammer... Make sure you put coup de, coup de grass on there. And if you have the food, you could just, it would probably be helpful to eat a spider slider or a larvanya to get that extra crit chance because it's just going to make chopping down your weapons or chopping down the resources much faster. And if you copy, if you complement that by using the an animation cancel, especially with the hammer, you'll be able to farm stuff super quick. So this is really good for farming quartzite for when you're late game and you're trying to upgrade all your weapons. Next thing you may or may not have known is that Throwing weapons, specifically spears, will do, I think, three to four times more damage. I think it depends on if the insects are weak to stabbing damage or not or resistant to it. I did test it against a bunch of different insects. It always does more damage. So by base, this pebblet spear, spear is going to do one damage. It does one damage here. And just to show, we do not have coup de grass once. We've taken that off, so we're not going to get a bunch of crits here. And I just want to show you how much extra damage it does. This could be really useful for fighting against mosquitoes. Or even if you just have like an insect at low health and you're using a spear and you've got it down to like one or two HP, just throw the spear at it. So this guy's probably got full health. So we're going to poke him once. You're going to see it does a little bit of damage to him. Now this one's got full health. And you can see just how much more damage it did to him. So that one did that much. That one did that. He just healed himself. So I think it does about three to four damage. I did test it against some of the flying insects. They all seem to be weak to stabbing. And it was doing way more damage to them than it was against the other insects. So throwing the spear can do three to four times more damage than just poking with it. Now, do be careful. If you throw it and it gets stuck in an insect and it runs away, it's going to be stuck in it. Sometimes it, we'll just throw it here on the ground. Sometimes it actually falls through the map. I'm sure you've seen your arrows fall through the map. And if you throw it and it bounces off of something, it'll bounce off of this. Sometimes it'll bounce off of things like rocks because it's not going to stick in a rock and it'll just fly away like this. It'll probably bounce off of that. Yep. And it'll just fly away sometimes. So you need to be careful. Do, do be mindful of this. Because what I did, I was when I was testing this originally, I had a level 7 spicy antlion greatsword, and I was playing in survival, and I threw it at a wolf spider, because I was figuring if it did 3 to 4 times more damage, and it was level 7, and the, and, it, and I can kill a wolf spider in about 3 to 4 hits with that weapon, that if I threw it at it, it would do the same thing. It did not. It only seems to be spears getting this huge bonus. So while you can throw the other weapons, at least from my testing, I didn't notice them doing extra damage. It just seems to be the spears are doing 3 to, times, three to 4 times more base damage when you throw them. The seventh thing you might not have known about Grounded is you can actually dive down to the water much faster and get to the bottom, especially the Koi Pond, by either jumping off a tall building or by jumping off of a bounce web. Now this makes perfect sense because if you walk off the edge of a pool into the pool or walk off like the edge of a lake into a lake, you're not going to go down very fast. If you jump off of a high diving board or maybe you're at a lake or something, you jump off of a rock or some kind of tall structure. You're going to get to the bottom much faster, and that applies in Grounded. So we're just going to show we have aphid slippers on, so these are not going to actually, we'll just take them off. They're not going to make us dive down any faster, so we're going to dive down, and you're going to see that's that's basically how fast you dive down if you are just walking into the water. So now we're going to bounce off the bounce web, and you're going to see how much faster we go down to the bottom. We don't hit this lily pad, so bam, you just go flying down. So basically it's almost like sprinting to the bottom. And this is really useful, especially early game, before you have all the underwater gear. If you're trying to explore the Koi Pond to get some of the resources down there, or you maybe only have the gill tubes and you don't have the bubble helmet yet, 
you want to get down to the depths as fast as possible so you can get those koi scales, you're going to want to use something like this to get down there as fast as possible. Of course, you might not have a bounce web, but you can just build any structure or jump off of anything, and it will just help you get down there much faster, preserve your breath, make you get down there much quicker. Now, next up, while we're over here, we built this high dive is you can actually sprint up ladders now. I think this was added in the Shroom and Doom update, but I know somebody the other day did not know that you could actually sprint up ladders when I was streaming. So basically, if you go up the ladder, this is the speed you go up normally. If you hold down the sprint button, you can see you go down much faster. Now, do be mindful, this will drain your stamina, but unless you've built a super, super, super tall ladder structure, you're not going to run out of stamina before you get to the top. Of course, I'm in creative, so my stamina is not draining. But that is super useful for climbing up tall ladders in order to get up much quicker. And then while we're up here, we're going to show you the ninth tip, our penultimate tip. And that is a way to save your glider is by not deploying it as soon as you jump. So we're going to jump off of here. Typically, I think when people jump with a glider, this is what they do. They just jump down and fall. But what we're going to do is we're going to grab this ladder and head our way back up here. So that's going to use your durability on your glider a lot faster than if you just deployed it the very last second. Now, I will say before I do this, you need to be careful because for some reason, sometimes the glider does not deploy. So if there is a small chance that your glider will not deploy and you will end up just splatting on the ground. But if 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 you if it works like it's supposed to, it won't happen. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna jump off and right before we hit the ground, we're gonna pull the glider out. And as you can see, we took no dam well, we're in creative, we didn't take damage. This definitely works in survival. I've tested it a million, I've used it a million times. You will not take damage and you will use far less durability on the glider. Because one thing you don't want to do is have your glider break while you're jumping from a high spot or if you're up exploring in the hedge or something. Or maybe you have a tall base and you want to, and you jump off. The last thing you want to do is jump off and think you have a glider and then you just splat on the ground because you don't have it. So just practice using it. And I would say basically the first couple times just deploy it a little bit earlier. But if you get really good at it, you can deploy it pretty much when you're like one top from the bottom and your glider will just last forever. Tenth and final thing you might not have known about Grounded is you can actually farm the flower petals directly from the flowers. So you're going to see the flower petals sitting down here. We're in the flower bed on the north side of the koi pond. You can also get flowers over on the southern side from these flowers over here. They do drop. Now, there are yellow flowers, there are purple flowers, and there are red flowers. They drop different colored petals. When you pick them up, they all turn blue. It doesn't really matter. But the ones that are purple that look like this that are facing downwards, not the ones that are sticking up, but these right here, you can actually farm them by meleeing the flower petals off of here. And I was kind of surprised about this one because that people didn't know this. I shared it in my stream the other day when I was farming flower petals for something. And a couple people were like, they didn't know it. So basically all you have to do is go up to the hosta plant, punch it, and there you go. There's your flower petals. So you can end up farming a ton of flower petals doing this. You can either punch them. You can use any weapon, I believe. It knocks them off. You don't need a chopping weapon. So we just hit it with a hammer. Probably hit it with a shovel. It'll probably come off too. I usually just do it with my fist because then I'm going to use less durability. And you can also jump and hit them and knock them down. But this is super useful if you need a bunch of flower petals because typically when you come over to these areas, there's only going to be like three or four of them laying on the ground, maybe less. And if you just need a bunch of them, what you can do is you can just run up here and you can just punch them off and just get yourself full stack or more. That's 10 things you probably didn't know about Grounded. Let me know in the comments which one surprised you the most. If you found this video helpful, click the like button below and consider subscribing for more videos just like this. You can also support the channel even more by becoming a channel member via the join button below, the card on the screen, or in the link in the description, and have your name mentioned in future videos like the Overseer 91. Thanks again to the Overseer 91 and all my other channel members who helped make videos like this possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.